Today, we're at the Huster Casino, playing in the, one of the biggest meetup games that you can ever be a part of. 300 people on the list, and I'm one of the featured players. Let's bring the bankroll, some upswing. Let's go. With over 300 people ready to punt off, me being one of them, what say we don't make history? I don't know what history is, but let's go win some money. In this very first hand of note, there's a $6 straddle going on from a good friend of ours, Mr. Tommy. You might have seen him on TikTok or some form of short form content in your life. The action ends up folding to a couple of players who limp. I look down at pocket deuces. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little limp C. Why? Because I think playing multi-way with this hand seems okay. A couple more people call. We're going four or five ways to a flop here that ends up bringing us bottom set. Action checks over to Tommy, who decides to throw out a lead for $15. Action then folds to me. I have a couple of options here, but considering I actually can use some protection, I want to go ahead and raise right now. So I make it $50, gets back to him, and he hymns and haws for a bit, and begrudgingly decides to fold. Unlucky for us, they're not getting more value, but hey, we'll take $50 in profit there any day of the week. Because this is the HCL meetup game, we will be switching over as we are one of the featured players. So a new table and some new faces. I know no one here, so hopefully they don't know that I'm an absolute punter because that might come to bite me in the butt. But in this first hand, we don't have to punt. The button makes it 25. The small blind then calls and I'm in the big blind with pocket queens. The ladies, easy spot for us to squeeze. This is exactly what we want. I make it $115 to go. My point is not to get two callers and be out of position. Yeah, that doesn't work out well and it almost backfires as the button quickly makes the call and then the big blind or the small blind I should say back raises all in for 167. I don't love it, the old cream back jam all in, but I have no option. I make the call for $52 extra and so does the button. Praying that our ladies stay intact here and that they do safe night as we're going out to a flop that comes out nine high on a board this dry for a three bet all in pot i don't think i need to be going too big so i make it 125 to go in hindsight going a little larger might make a little more sense either way the button decides to fold we show our hand pretty quickly the river card comes at three of diamonds or the turn card comes at three of diamonds and the river card comes in eight of clubs we showed and we win. We'll never know what either player had, but I don't care as long as I'm bringing the money to my stack. We have another really fun hand and there's gonna be a lot of context, so bear with me. The same player that was on the button from the last hand raises to 25. A really nice gentleman and Seth, someone I definitely wanna be giving action to as he seems to be giving action to the rest of the table. In poker, these kind of things I think are important to set precedence for. Sure, you can be a nit and just like, you know, be Mr. EV guy, but in my opinion, providing action to action players is the right thing to do. I'm not saying give away your money, but I'm saying like, you know, have some fun. Let's go to battle. That's what I'm here for. But there's a caveat to all this. Don't pick 9-4 offsuit to go to battle with, unless you're me. Obviously, he makes it 25 and I make the call. Granted, I am in position. The big line comes along as well. And for $80, we're going off to a flop or we flop bottom pair. Nothing really to write home about, and he decides to throw out a seabed for $50. With the action on me, I think there's a couple of different options on the table. We can definitely turn our bottom pair into a bluff if we're a psychopath donkey, which, depending on the day and depending on my mood, very capable, but we decide to land on the road less variant by and just make the call. The big blind gets out of the way, and we're looking to pretty much fold any turn. Yeah, except when the turn comes in nine of clubs. We were here just trying to give this lovely gentleman action and somehow I've turned myself two pair on a very wet board texture. With a bit of thought, he decides to throw out a massive bet of 160. Yeah, not gonna be doing anything besides going all in for 600 effective. He calls pretty quickly. We're running out the board twice as I ask him and he says twice, whatever, let's do it. The first card's a six of clubs. I'm begging the dealer. Hold the baby! This is a huge pot in relation to the freaking bankroll we're currently playing with. The second tour card comes a five of clubs. Seems innocuous. We show our hand. It's good. Let's fucking go! Bankroll challenge in full effect. We're mooning. Holy crap. I didn't see you guys down there. Now that 
of your attention. If you guys didn't know, there's 70% of y'all that aren't even subscribed to the channel. Maybe a lot to ask for, but if you guys would do me the favor and click the subscribe button down below, it costs you guys a grand total of about 0.75 seconds, and it goes a long way in helping us hit the algorithm. If you guys want to play with me on the Splash Squads, you know where to find me. Links at the top of the description. We got every single one of the stakes that you want to play, but without further ado, there's quite a few more poker hands to play. Let's get back into the episode, and I've got to take out some trash. Two unbelievably massive hands back to back. I don't know how to feel about it. In this next hand, forgive me, the video starts here on the turn. Early position makes it $15 to go. I didn't even see him open, so I make it 20. The dealer then tells me that it's 15. Ugh, this is a disaster. With a suited ace like this, I'd rather be three betting, if I'm being quite honest, in late position. But here I go, not knowing what I'm doing. Kind of overwhelmed, to be fair. The button calls, the big blind calls. Four ways to a flop that comes jack jack seven with two spades the initial razor throws out a c bet for 40. this is where alarm bells should be ringing when you're four ways off to a flop that comes paired and the c better is still c betting yeah a little bit scary albeit i'm never folding that up flush draw but it's just something to be concerned about only i'm the one dumb enough to make the call and we're going off to the turn card that comes out the 10 of diamonds yeah, when he continues again here for 75, I think I should just be over with the hand here. The one thing that was a saving grace is that now I pick up a little more equity by virtue of a nine bringing me the gutter ball. But in reality, my ace is almost never good here. There's a small chance that I'm drawing stone dead against a flopped boat or a turned boat. And more than anything, it's going to be really tough to get paid off even if I do catch a spade as my hand is kind of face up at this point. But once again, because I'm a little overwhelmed as being asked to move tables, I just decide to flick in the call because that seems easier. The river card comes the five of clubs, so I don't make my hand. And when my opponent checks it over to me, he allows me the opportunity to bluff. But in reality, I just don't think I'm ever getting a hand to fold. I just decide to check it back. Throws a really, really funny smirk at me and shows Jack 10 suited. So looks like we would have got our hand absolutely caught in the cookie jar. Happy that I didn't bite for that one there. As I told you, now that I'm getting to play this stakes a little more often, I'm getting a little better at judging the strategies. Honestly, we're kind of lucky we didn't make our nut flush in the last hand, but to close things out, we're at the last table of the session. The stand-up game is on, meaning that there is a $10 bounty per player if you do not win a single hand during the allotted period of time. I'm under the gun. There's a straddle on to $6. I make it $35. The button makes a call, and so does the straddle. And the flop comes not very favorable. It's queen jack for rainbow. Not favorable for our exact hand, but to be fair, not bad for what these kids are calling range nowadays. And everyone checks to my surprise. When the turn card comes out the ace of diamonds, this is like the perfect bluff card for me. It brings in a backdoor flush, but outside of that, this is definitely more favorable for me, right? I make it $50 to go, knowing damn well I could be blasting off into an OMC double triple trap with the nuts. But in reality, you gotta go for spots and trust your gut sometimes. My gut is telling me from these live reads, these guys ain't got shit. And it looks like my gut, my live read was dead on. These two players pretty much snap fold. We show our sixes and we get to sit down, baby. Let's go. I really hope you guys have been joining the series. It's been an absolute pleasure to put together. I've got to thank some people for today's video. Big thank you to the Hustler family for having me there. Big shout out to Billy Diga for having me as one of the featured players. And a massive, the most important thank you to the lovely, lovely people that we met today's video. There were so many people that came and said hello. A lot of people didn't even recognize it was me, obviously because the hair is gone and I'm obviously not as fat. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge thank you to you guys for coming through and supporting. And the most important thing, I guess, aside of all of that, from uh, obviously Glaze and all these people, thanking them, loving them, we won. That's really awesome. We did really, really well, to be uh, to be fair. Things just panned out for us. We gave action a 9-4 offsuit in a spot, and we still ended up finding a huge, huge double up. So if you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure to click the like button down below. Like I mentioned earlier, 70% of y'all aren't even subscribed. So if you guys would do me the favor, click the subscribe button down below, that'd be really huge. Remember in the last video you guys saw, my cousin Far From Rich came on and let you guys know if we get a thousand likes, he's gonna come on to do a special featured episode. So until then, I just wanna thank you guys again for the constant support on this channel, the constant support in the series. There's so many more exciting things to come. If it isn't the road trip that gets you excited, the WSOP stuff that doesn't get you excited or the travel stuff that doesn't get you excited. I don't know what will. I love you
love you guys all dearly. See you guys in the next episode. Until then, doses.